TV and Bethy. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a book review that was kind of impromptu. The book was. Um, but I ended up really enjoying it and that book is Ava Gardner, The Secret Conversations by Peter Evans. Now I got this book um, as a gift in my gift bag from the TCM Film Festival and I was kind of like um, I've never seen Ava Gardner in anything. I've only heard that she was infamously feisty and had a tumultuous relationship with Frank Sinatra. That's all I ever heard. And that she was also revered as one of the most beautiful women in the world. Rightly so. This woman is just gorgeous. This book is interesting. Like, it really, it really gripped me, but it also made me sad when I found out the end. Um, so, so here's the story. This has taken place somewhere in the late 80s, um, I believe, and Ava Gardner, living in London now, contacts this man named Peter Evans. This man, Peter Evans, and basically said, Honey, I heard you're the best. I want you to help me write my book. I'm broke. If you couldn't act or sing or dance, they sent you to um, what MGM called their acting school, which they basically give you lessons on everything. Paid for all of your stuff and everything. Really, all you had to do was sit there and look pretty. And that's why a lot of people hit the casting couch hard. But Ava Gardner... She's She's got some pluck. I like her. She started out as this barefoot little hillbilly type of girl from North Carolina who grew up on a farm, really didn't have much of anything. She was quite poor. And tragedy kind of struck her family when her father died when she was very young. Um, her sister's husband was an aspiring photographer and liked to take portraits of Ava. So he took this particular portrait of her when she was young. I think it was 17? 17 or something like that. And he put it in a window in New York City where an MGM talent scout just immediately saw it and was like, um, you're going to Hollywood. Don't you wish it was that fucking easy? So she went with her sister out to Hollywood she took classes, but other than that, she really didn't do much. Um, she wasn't really old enough to have a proper job out there. Her sister helped her. Um, they had a small little rundown apartment that they shared. First day there at the studios, she meets Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney is like notorious for sleeping with a lot of women. You surprising, right? I mean. And he's attractive in his own way. I'll give him that. He's very confident and a ham. But he is also a big man whore. Holy God. He immediately sets after Ava, constantly asking her to marry him. And I mean, like, they haven't even gone out on a date yet. He takes her to clubs, and then he takes her to places to go dancing, and then places to go out and eat. Practically every night, Oh, we're, we're waiting a thunderstorm. I'm so excited. But he keeps asking her and asking her to marry him. And she's like, I don't, you know what, Mick? I don't really want to, you know. But eventually she just, I guess, you know, she's really young. She's 19 at this point when she decides to marry him. She basically kind of goes, I'm kind of tired of him asking me. So, all right, why not? Let's, let's do it. And then she eventually really falls in love with him. And they freaking do it like rabbits all the time. She she basically said that that's the only thing that held their marriage together was the fact that they had pretty remarkable sex. About a year later, she divorces him. She didn't really want to hurt his feelings or take him to the cleaners like his other wives had. So, you know, they, they leave it as friends. She had sort of a relationship with Howard Hughes, which I think Howard Hughes is a severely interesting individual in my book. Her second husband, of course, is Artie Shaw, who's a famous band leader. He was super intelligent, but also 
really put her down mentally and tried to send her to a shrink a couple times. After Artie, she had a string of different affairs with, with different co-stars, but of course the famous relationship is her and Frank Sinatra, which was on again off again for years and years and years. Even up until their deaths, they talk to each other. They're basically the same person, which is crazy. As far as film careers go, she didn't really get into very many good films until she got into this movie called The Killers, which is a movie I really want to see her in uh, because she has this iconic look that's just really amazing. There are other people like Ernest Hemingway, which you might find interesting, who actually wrote parts for her. Um, parts in movies about her and she also had the movie The Barefoot Contessa which is uh, pretty much her most iconic film role it was actually written about her very very tightly based off of her relationship with Howard Hughes which they tried a shit ton to cover up not very successfully I guess the thing I liked about this book though is that it's not set up to be a biography this is literally notes and tapes, recorded tapes, of her and Peter Evans talking. Hanging out, drinking wine at like 3 in the morning, um, phone calls in the early morning hours, just her spilling her guts, and her severe insecurities, her going back and forth about, yeah, I don't... I don't want to say this in the book because I don't want to hurt this person or I don't want to air my dirty laundry in public type of thing and she's constantly backing out of this book going well I might not do this book after all which is driving Peter absolutely nuts because I'd go crazy too I'd be wasting my time and my money finally when you get towards the end they just finished all this stuff about Frank Sinatra and apparently he has a humongous cock which is thrown in there a couple times. <laughs> they get to the last chapter and it just kind of cuts off. And I'm like, wait, I want to hear more juicy gossip about old Hollywood film stars. But apparently at the last minute Ava decides, you know what? He's constantly trying, Peter is constantly trying to convince me that this stuff is the real me, but I don't want to remember my life that way. I'm going to do it however I damn well please. And she eventually fires Peter, goes with another writer who will do everything she says, which is a bad idea. And she comes out with this very bland, very empty autobiography that really doesn't sell that well. Years later, after Ava's gone, and a lot of um, the other people close to her have also passed, Peter decides, you know what, I'm going to get the rights and I'm going to publish all of the recordings and the notes that I have so people will know the real Ava Gardner. And I love the real Ava Gardner. But it was also sad because as he was finishing the last few pages of this book, he literally died of a massive heart attack right at his desk and I was upset but this is a great book. I like it. I'm determined to read some more classic film star biographies and I'm determined to see some Ava Gardner films because she kept telling everybody I'm not an actress. I'm not an actress but other people seem to think differently so thumbs up.